Well, it would appear that you guys really enjoyed my story last time. I don't blame you. I'm pretty, uh, pretty damn cool. Pretty entertaining. Uh, Alright, if y'all got any uh, little young ones there that are afraid of the swears, uh, it's time to get them on out. Get them. Get them on out. Uh, grab yourselves a snack. Grab yourselves, you know, something to drink. Whatever you want, baby. And get ready. Because we're about to do another story time for grown-ups. Yeah, I know you missed it. Now, today's little story is another one that y'all think you know, but you don't know. Right. So this story is about these two little kids, uh, who I'm gonna call the lazy-ass kids and the creepy-ass witch. So these kids was in a little village. They had like a, um, they were on the outskirts, you know, like that house that people don't normally go to because somebody sniffs glue or something. Just, you know, their dad was weird. Their mouth was a little cuckoo. Uh, just, you know, a little crazy. She liked to dance with herself at night, talk to nobody. So the kids just kind of had themselves. They were their own homies. You dig? Well, anyways, uh, the parents uh, couldn't find good work. Not enough money to go around, too many mouths to feed. So first, they try to appeal to the kids and say, listen, all right, you guys gotta, you guys gotta step up your game here. Go mow lawn or something. Um, these kids, they was named Hansel and Gretel on the count of being German. Uh, in case I didn't mention that, I just did. Uh, I'm not going to do any weird accents, because that's not very polite, now is it? So, uh, Hansel and Greta were like, uh, Dad, look around us and shit. It is a, we got a creepy-ass forest over there. See, that's a creepy-ass forest territory. We got some weird swamp going that way, where all sorts of creepy stuff's going on. We hear there's like a, you know, we got Billy Goat Meadow way down the road there. What you want us to mow? We ain't even know. I don't even know what a lawn mower is. That's some magic thing. To see that this hadn't been invented yet. So that's a little fourth wall for y'all. Doing a little fan service for you guys today. A little fourth wall break. Enjoy that shit, baby. Enjoy it. So. Uh, anyways. Try as they might. The kids just could not find steady work. Uh, the mind dad argue one night, the kids know something is up. Uh, and they overhear the parents saying that, you know, they're just gonna have to go and dump these kids off in the woods. They just don't know what else to do. It's either like, it's like a survival thing, you know, it's the husband and wife starve, or they all starve. Um, so they're looking out for them. So what happens is the kids say, uh, you know what, forget this. We're gonna... You know, we got each other's backs. We're good. So the brother and sister, they head out on their own, sneak out at night, and then head into the only place they know to run, where the parents won't follow, the deep, dark forest. Because, uh, clearly that's always safe in horror movies. It's never safe in horror movies. Little life tip, folks. Don't be running into dark forests. I think that's a that's a moral we can now go by today, really. Um, so anyways, Story Cat there agrees. You can probably hear him meowing a little bit. Story Cat there agrees. So, they get uh, about an hour or two in. They're hungry. Um, they have a little bread. Not much else in their little knapsacks. Um, they got a broken compass. That shit don't work. So they just, you know, they're like, well, that's great. Uh, they got candles, but the candles are growing dim. And they start to... Oh, shit. What is that? They start to smell something great. Oh, my God. This is not a drill. They start to smell food. Candy. Tons of candy. They don't even know. 
what they're smelling, but they know it smells fantastic. So they go and trot along, doop, 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 and follow this path, and as the path gets prettier, the smells get nicer. They notice this really extravagant house. I mean, this thing is done up. Licorice. Uh, it's got all sorts of graham cracker for the window shutters. Looks like some sort of candy glass on it. Frosted, so you know that shit's expensive. All sorts of gum drops all along it. I mean, enough stuff for kids to eat and eat and eat. And uh, probably go crazy and get uh, diabetes. But anyways. Who the hell made this original story? Honestly. Anyways. Uh, I'm here to judge, baby. Just telling you what really went down. So these kids, being nosy, being hungry, not thinking in their right heads, do what most kids do in this situation. They're like, oh, we having some of this. So uh, Hansel, the braver of the two, decides that he's going to go and grab a piece of the shutter, break it off, and gnaw on it a little, and it is the softest, best graham cracker he's ever had. I'm talking like when you dip one in milk, and it just like melts in your mouth. It was like that. So he's like, oh shit. Sister, you gotta try some of this. So they spend about an hour just snacking on the outside of this house. And they hear this little old lady say, Who's eating my house? And they're like, oh. Uh, yeah, about that. Sorry, miss. We were just really, really hungry. So she says, Oh, don't worry. Come on in. There's plenty of food for you inside. Well, these kids are happy to hear this because, shit, they ain't ate right in about a week. You know, like I said, the mom and the dad, they, you know, they didn't have much money. They had to split one bean between four of them. You know what I mean? That poor. That poor. So, these kids are elated. They're going to eat like king and queen, they think. So they go in this house. They go in there, and uh, they see this old woman who looks a little haggard, you know. Years ain't been kind to her. She's got a bit of a hunchback. She hunched over. And like this, you know. But hey, that's how life will do you sometimes, kids. Stay away from the meth. Anyway, so this lady's sitting there. And these kids don't have any warning bells, which, let's be honest, they should. Creepy-ass woman trying to attract kids with the house made of candy. The hell kind of pedo shit is that? Anyways, so, they're all sitting there, eating themselves pies and cakes and all the sweets they can muster. And these kids, uh, they get a little sleepy. And the old woman says, why don't you guys have a little nap over there? Uh, I have some beds you can sleep on. Again, the kids think, well, we ain't going home, because, shit, we're eating good here. And then, you know, maybe tomorrow we'll go off and see what's farther down the forest, maybe get ourselves some jobs. You know, start out on our own. So they go, they nap, because they're in that good food coma that you've been in after Thanksgiving, you know, when you pull. You're like, ugh, oh, I can't eat anything else. And like your Aunt Nora's like, oh, but you gotta eat some pumpkin pie. And you're like, one piece. And then you eat that and you're like, oh, I can't eat nothing else. And then, you know, someone else is like, oh, I brought apple pie. And you're like, apple pie, son of a bitch. So then you have a piece of that. And by then, you're just, you in that chair. And, you know, five minutes later, you're like this. You just, I. So that's how those kids were. Well, they wake up, and uh, they in a cage. Two cages, to be exact. Uh, the witch has separated the boy and the girl across from each other. And in the middle, they notice uh, that this woman has moved the bookcase, and there is a huge walk-in oven. Giant. I'm talking like, you can make ten pizzas in this bitch. It's huge. So they sit there, and uh, the girl's like, hey, what the hell's going on, lady? 
uh, why are we in here? What do we do? And the woman says, Don't worry, pretties. I'm feeding you to fatten you up, and then I'm going to eat you. There's a lot of those, you know, a lot of these stories, they're like creepy ass people. These are parables, guys, for stranger danger and shit, so. You know, I don't care if you're 30, 40, 50, whatever. Be careful, creepy people. That's the moral here. Got it? Alright, now keep uh, keep snacking and all that shit y'all doing. Enjoy. So, Hansel starts freaking out. He tries to be Mr. Brave. He loves his sister. His sister loves him. They start shaking on the bears. Oh, you know, they're trying to get that health strength in them. Like, uh, like they all hopped up on Red Bull and shit. They got that sugar strength, so they're shaking the bars. No avail. Uh, these cages ain't made out of candy. They're made out of steel. And try as they might, these are just little kids, so they ain't going nowhere. So the witch cackles a little bit. And, uh, she decides, you know, she's gonna start feeding them a little more every day, trying to get them fattened up. So this goes on for about a week. She starts poking at the boy and girl. What you don't know is that they barely been eaten. They've been taking all the food and throwing it out the window. So all these squirrels and woodland creatures and all this have been gathering outside. Got themselves a nice little posse of raccoons out there just nom 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 nom. You know, they're like, shit, these humans are feeding us. We like them. Little squirrels, they're all like, hey, you know. It's like some friggin' animation shit going on out there. Well, the witch, she don't normally leave. She's a homebody. You know, because, you know, she's a creepy-ass witch. What's she gonna do? Is she gonna go in town? Hey, give me your children to eat? No, that, uh, that ain't gonna fly. So, she spends most of her days just doing witchy things like brooding, you know. Is doing lists like uh, stirring her cauldron. I don't even know what's in it. Don't ask me. I, I don't know. So, uh, every day, for another week, this goes on. And every day she walks up and she pokes Hansel and Gretel with the stick and says, Why are you ready yet? You should be big enough. You're not ready yet. Eat more. And they say nothing. They're just nodding to each other. Because they know when that cage door opens, something's going to pop off. They're going to whoop that witch's ass. But by now, just about every animal in the forest has caught wind. They've been talking. They're like, yo, there are these humans in there. That crazy old woman, she gone too far this time, man. These guys are nice. They've been feeding us. They've been throwing us all sorts of food out here and shit. Plus, they're all hyper from sugar, you know? So you got deers running around in circles, like using Bolt and shit, just... Going friggin' crazy, all jittery, you know? All of them just sugar hyper jittery. So Hansel and Gretel, while the witch is asleep, they call out to these animals outside the window, yo. they like, Sst. You know, little possums and shit are all like, hey, what's up, baby? And they're all like, hey, can you gnaw us out of here? Can you gnaw through the, uh, you know, with the graham cracker? And they're like, oh, yeah, sure, we'll do that for you humans. Why not? You're nice. So they watch the witch as they hear this gnawing. And an hour goes by, and all of a sudden, boom, a hole on either side of the house appears. It's so a Hansel and Gretel. Sneak out of that hole slowly. Like, like little, you know, like little pint sized ninjas and shit like this. You know, and they are excited, folks, because they feel it. They are so pissed off. Ooh, I'm telling you. That's like a long time for a kid to be in there doing nothing. You know how kids are. Kids are at their age, shit. I think they're about eight. At their age, it'd be like, oh, I want to play this, and then they see something shiny, and they're like, oh, shiny. So imagine them being stuck in there all day doing nothing but just feeding animals. They were pissed. The fury of children ain't something you want to fuck with. 
and this is one already half-assed broken woman who uh, fell asleep near her cauldron and one giant ass oven. So they sneak out, they open that door slowly, doop, 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 doop. Doop, 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 doop. We get on either side of her, grab her old ass, and as she wakes up, toss her ass right in that oven and slam it shut. Well, she's screaming and pounding on the oven, and they light the fire underneath it, and they cook that witch up. Oh, but that ain't the end of the story, folks. Mm mm. Because they re remember the kindness of these forest animals. So you want to guess what those forest animals, like all the big ones ate? That bear? That bear had witch for dinner. All the meat eaters, all the wolves, all the other animals that helped those kids out? Witch for dinner. And all the rest of them got to snack on that house together. And Hansel and Gretel had enough food to bring back home to their mom and pop. Mm-hmm. So they did live happily ever after. And then Hansel ended up going and pumping iron. Gretel joined the uh, German army, ended up going and being some tough chick. So they grew up strong, they grew up to be tough, tough people. Uh, it's said that Hansel became a lumberjack who helped out a little Red Riding Hood. But that's a whole other story for another time. I hope you all enjoyed. Today's story time for grown-ups. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to share, like, tell your friends about us. I have been Gary, your host. And uh, you all take it easy, baby. Have a nice day. Keep it smooth. Keep it smooth.